Welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we have seen how we can determine or describe a dynamic system using an ordinary differential equation of such a type here. Right? We have seen, um, we have a, a law that describes how the time derivative is defined. We have an initial condition. And due to this, we call this an initial value problem, meaning we start at x0. Right? Here in the bottom left, you see the plot here. We have an initial condition. And from this on, the system evolves over time. Right? And what we have also seen that for, for some systems, if this right-hand side f is a linear system, right, a times x, then we can find analytical solution. However, we have also seen that for nonlinear systems, this is typically not possible. So we have two problems. First of all, if you see that the, the dynamical system is defined on this interval, we see that, in fact, these are infinitely many points in time. Right, you see it's a, a function, so it is defined on infinitely many points, <clears throat> which is problem one if you want to implement it in a computer. And problem number two is obviously we do not have a closed form solution for this type of system. So the question is now what can we do to solve this numerically in a computer? Right, and due to, to this, um, we, we have to consider what is this right-hand side f really, right? We see it is defined as the time derivative. So if we look at this plot, then really f of x0 would be the tangent in precisely this point x0. So now the question is, can we approximate this tangent using some knowledge that we may have from the system without actually needing this analytical description, right? And a very simple approach might be to take, instead of a, a tangent, a secant through two points, right? So let's say we consider this point as well. And then we see that drawing the line through this, these two points gives us a secant. It's not the tangent, but it's close enough, right? So two steps are necessary to try to, to solve this numerically. First of all, we need a discretization in time. which means that our time is now not from this continuous interval, but it's from a finite set of grid points. Right? Let's say we have n plus 1 time steps. This means we are now in this discrete setting. Right? And what I've indicated here, the secant uh, through these two points, consecutive points, means that our time derivative x dot can roughly be approximated using the difference in two consecutive points, right? I have not said until now what this delta t means, but this is the discrete time step that we choose, how far each of these points is apart from, from its neighbor, right? So let's see this, right? So what I'm going to say is that this distance here is precisely this time step delta t. And for now, we're going to assume that it's the same time step everywhere, so it's an equidistant grid over time. OK, now we see that this is precisely right, this rule through, through, uh, through uh, these two points. We have this approximation. And what I can do now, I can simply reformulate this in order to get an update rule for the next time step. OK, so let's just put the x t plus delta t to the left-hand side which means that we get x of t plus delta t becomes, or is approximately, x of t, right? If I put this to the, the other side, plus delta t times this x dot of t, right? So all I've done is, you know, shift around the terms. But what you see now, this x dot is something I know because I do know, for now, the right-hand side of my dynamical system, right? Which means this is x of t plus delta t times f of x of t, okay? And now you see we find a really nice formula because the next time step, x of t plus delta t, which might be the x1 here, can be computed using the knowledge I already have, x at t0 in this case, plus the time step I have chosen myself, multiplied by the right-hand side of my dynamical system. Right, and so this is the very first and simplest thing you can do to 
um, numerically solve a differential equation, and this is known as the explicit Euler scheme. Right, and for now, um, we're going to stop here. What I'm going to do now for the rest of the video is consider the example of the damped or the mass spring damper system. And I'm going to show you a little bit of code how this looks in the simulation, right? So if we consider the spring mass damper system, then we have seen the right hand side was of the form x dot equals a times x of t, right? It's a linear system. So what we can do is we can simply use this rule that I have derived here, right? So this is the explicit Euler rule. I can use this um, to solve the spring mass damper system numerically. So the explicit Euler scheme for this one is now x of t plus delta t is, and I'm just using the rule, x of t plus my time step delta t times a times x of t. Right? So very simple application of what we've seen before. Right? And now let's look at some Julia code to see how this looks in practice. Right, and what you see here is a very simple code where I've implemented basically all that I've written here. Right? And I'm going to get through this step by step, and then let's look how the solution looks. Okay, so I have here the parameters of my spring mass damper system. So K is the, the spring constant, M is the mass of, of the mass that is oscillating, and D is the damping constant. So you see we have unit uh, stiffness, unit mass, and a, slow, a small damping term. So it's a rather slow, a slow decay. This gives us, as we have seen in previous videos, this system matrix A. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at a time interval 0 to 20 seconds with a time step of 0 0.1. Okay, so this gives me 201 time steps that I'm going to simulate over. And the solution is now actually very simple. We have also seen for linear systems, we do know the analytical solution. So this is what I have implemented here. So the analytical solution at every time instance is the initial condition times e to the a times t, right? Ex matrix exponential can be used to, to predict. And so if you look at this now, then, well, this is just some plotting commands. This is the solution we get, okay? So the spring mass damper system means we start at some initial condition I chose uh, above, two for the position, 1.5 for the velocity, and we see that we have this, this oscillating behavior, and we also see this decay due to the damping. Okay, now let's compare this to the explicit Euler scheme, the one I have marked in blue here, where we see that um, actually the code is very, very simple, right? It's just one line basically. So we have this XEE for the explicit Euler, where you see that the update rule is precisely what I've written here, right? We have the, the XEE at time step i is XEE at time step i minus one, plus, this is the rule I've written here, DT times A times XE at time step i minus one. And so just some more plotting commands, and this is the plot that we get. So you see that actually the behavior is quite nice, okay? So we have this oscillating behavior. Um, but you also see the problem that I indicated here in my, in my little sketch earlier, that it's not perfectly accurate. And we see actually there's a qualitative issue. While the damped system loses energy, the explicit Euler scheme even gains in energy, and it will eventually blow up. So well, there's lots of room for improvement, and this is something we are going to discuss in more detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you.